Khmer Architecture In Khmer Architecture, the period of Angkor is the period in the history of the Khmer Empire from approximately the later half of the 8th century CE to the first half of the 15th century CE. In any study of Angkorian architecture, the emphasis is necessarily on religious architecture, since all the remaining Angkorian buildings are religious in nature. During the period of Angkor, only temples and other religious buildings were constructed of stone. Non religious buildings such as dwellings were constructed of perishable materials such as wood, and so have not survived. The religious architecture of Angkor has characteristic structures, elements, and motifs, which are identified in the glossary below. Since a number of different architectural styles succeeded one another during the Angkorian period, not all of these features were equally in evidence throughout the period. Indeed, Scholars have referred to the presence or absence of such features as one source of evidence for dating the remains. Many temples had been built before Cambodia became a powerful kingdom of Khmer Empire which dominated most of the Indochina region. At that time, Cambodia was known as Chenla Kingdom, the predecessor state of Khmer Empire. There are three pre Angkorian architectural styles. Scholars have worked to develop a periodization of Angkorian architectural styles. The following periods and styles may be distinguished. Each is named for a particular temple regarded as paradigmatic for the style. Angkorian builders used brick, sandstone, laterite, and wood as their materials. The ruins that remain are of brick, sandstone, and laterite, the wood elements having been lost to decay and other destructive processes. The earliest Angkorian temples were made mainly of brick. Good examples are the temple towers of Prako. Loliai and Baekong at Haraharalaya. Decorations were usually carved into a stucco applied to the brick, rather than into the brick itself. Angkor's neighbor state of Champa was also the home to numerous brick temples that are similar in style to those of Angkor. The most extensive ruins are at My Son in Vietnam. A Cham story tells of the time that the two countries settled an armed conflict by means of a tower building contest proposed by the Cham king Po Klongarai. While the Khmer built a standard brick tower, Pok Longarai directed his people to build an impressive replica of paper and wood. In the end, the Cham replica was more impressive than the real brick tower of the Khmer, and the Cham won the contest. The only stone used by Angkorian builders was sandstone, obtained from the Kula Mountains. Since its obtainment was considerably more expensive than that of brick, sandstone only gradually came into use, and at first was used for particular elements such as door frames. The 10th century temple of Takeo is the first Angkorian temple to be constructed more or less entirely from sandstone. Angkorian builders used laterite, a clay that is soft when taken from the ground but that hardens when exposed to the sun, for foundations and other hidden parts of buildings. Because the surface of laterite is uneven, it was not suitable for decorative carvings, unless first dressed with stucco. Laterite was more commonly used in the Khmer provinces than at Angkor itself. The central sanctuary of an Angkorian temple was home to the temple's primary deity, the one to whom the site was dedicated, typically Shiva or Vishnu in the case of a Hindu temple, Buddha or a Bodhisattva in the case of a Buddhist temple. The deity was represented by a statue, or in the case of Shiva, most commonly by a linga. Since the temple was not considered a place of worship for use by the population at large, but rather a home for the deity, the sanctuary needed only to be large enough to hold the statue or linga, it was never more than a few meters across. Its importance was instead conveyed by the height of the tower, praise it, rising above it, by its location at the center of the temple, and by the greater decoration its walls. Symbolically, the sanctuary represented Mount Meru, the legendary home of the Hindu gods. The prang is the tall finger-like spire, usually richly carved, common to much Khmer religious architecture. Khmer temples were typically enclosed by a concentric series of walls, with a central sanctuary in the middle. This arrangement represented the mountain ranges surrounding Mount Meru, the mythical home of the gods. Enclosures are the spaces between these walls, and between the innermost wall and the temple itself. By modern convention, enclosures are numbered from the center outwards. The walls defining the enclosures of Khmer temples are frequently linen galleries, while passage through the walls is by way of Gapur is located at the cardinal points. A gallery is a passageway running along the wall of an enclosure along the axis of a temple, often open to one or both sides. Historically, the form of the gallery evolved during the 10th century from the increasingly long hallways which had earlier been used to surround the central sanctuary of a temple. 
During the period of Angkor Wat in the first half of the 12th century, additional half galleries on one side were introduced to buttress the structure of the temple. Agapura is an entrance building. At Angkor, passage through the enclosure walls surrounding a temple compound is frequently accomplished by means of an impressive gapura, rather than just an aperture in the wall or a doorway. Enclosures surrounding a temple are often constructed with a gapura at each of four cardinal points. In plan, gapuras are usually cross-shaped and elongated along the axis of the enclosure wall. If the wall is constructed with an accompanying gallery, the gallery is sometimes connected to the arms of the gapura. Many Angkorian gapuras have a tower at the center of the cross. The lintels and pediments are often decorated, and guardian figures, tvarapalas, are often placed or carved on either side of the doorways. A hall of dancers is a structure of a type found in certain late 12th century temples constructed under King Jayavarman VII, Taprog, Prakhan, Bantekade, and Bantachamar. It is a rectangular building elongated along the temple's east axis and divided into four courtyards by galleries. Formerly it had a roof made of perishable materials, now only the stone walls remain. The pillars of the galleries are decorated with carved designs of dancing gopsaras, hence scholars have suggested that the hall itself may have been used for dancing. House of Fire, or Dharmasala, is the name given to a type of building found only in temples constructed during the reign of late 12th century monarch Jayavarman Vai, Prakhan, Taprok, and Bantajamar. A house of fire has thick walls, a tower at the west end and south-facing windows. Scholars theorize that the house of fire functioned as a rest house with fire for travelers. An inscription at Prakhan tells of 121 such rest houses lining highways into Angkor. The Chinese traveler Zhou Deguan expressed his admiration for these rest houses when he visited Angkor in 1296 AD. Another theory is that the House of Fire had a religious function as the repository of the sacred flame used in sacred ceremonies. Structures conventionally known as libraries are a common feature of Khmer temple architecture, but their true purpose remains unknown. Most likely they function broadly as religious shrines rather than strictly as repositories of manuscripts. Freestanding buildings they were normally placidan pairs on either side of the entrance to an enclosure, opening to the west. Saws and bares were reservoirs, generally created by excavation and embankment, respectively. It is not clear whether the significance of these reservoirs was religious, agricultural, or a combination of the two. The two largest reservoirs at Angkor were the West Beret and the East Beret located on either side of Angkor Tom. The East Beret is now dry. The West Meban is an 11th century temple standing at the center of the West Beret and the East Meban is a 10th century temple is standing at the center of the East Beret. The Beret associated with Prakhan is the Jayataka, in the middle of which stands the 12th century temple of Nikpian. Scholars have speculated that the Jayataka represents the Himalayan lake of Anabatepta, known for its miraculous healing powers. The dominant scheme for the construction of state temples in the Angkorian period was that of the Temple Mountain, an architectural representation of Mount Meru, the home of the gods in Hinduism. The style was influenced by Indian temple architecture. Enclosures represented the mountain chains surrounding Mount Meru, while a moat represented the ocean. The temple itself took shape as a pyramid of several levels, and the home of the gods was represented by the elevated sanctuary at the center of the temple. The first great temple mountain was the Baikong, a five-level pyramid dedicated in 881 by King Indravarman I. The structure of Baikong took shape of stepped pyramid, popularly identified as Temple Mountain of early Khmer temple architecture. The striking similarity of the Baikong and Borobudur in Java, going into architectural details such as the gateways and stairs to the upper terraces, Strongly suggests that Borobudur might serve as the prototype of Baikong. There must have been exchanges of travelers, if not mission, between Khmer Kingdom and the Sailendras in Java. Transmitting to Cambodia not only ideas, but also technical and architectural details of Borobudur, including arched gateways and corbeling method. Other Khmer temple mountains include Bafuan, Pre Rup, Takeo, Kokur, the Fiminakas, and most notably the Phnom Baikang at Angkor. According to Charles Hyam, a temple was built for the worship of the ruler, whose essence, if a Saivite, was embodied in Olinka. Housed in the central sanctuary which served as a temple mausoleum for the ruler after his death, these central temples also contained shrines dedicated to the royal ancestors and thus became centers of ancestor worship. Bari leaves are individual figures, 
groups of figures, or entire scenes cut into stone walls, not as drawings but as sculpted images projecting from a background. Sculpture in bar relief is distinguished from sculpture in haute relief, in that the latter projects farther from the background, in some cases almost detaching itself from it. The Angkori and Khmer preferred to work in bar relief, while their neighbors the Cham were partial to haute relief. Narrative bar reliefs are bar reliefs depicting stories from mythology or history. Until about the 11th century AD, the Angkori and Khmer confined their narrative Ibas reliefs to the space on the tympana above doorways. The most famous early narrative bar reliefs are those on the tympana at the 10th century temple of Bhantesre, depicting scenes from Hindu mythology as well as scenes from the great works of Indian literature, the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. By the 12th century, however, the Angkorian artists were covering entire walls with narrative scenes in bar relief. At Angkor Wat, the external gallery wall is covered with some 12,000 or 13,000 square meters of such scenes, some of them historical, some mythological. Similarly, the outer gallery at the Bayon contains extensive bar reliefs documenting the everyday life of the medieval Khmer as well as historical events from the reign of King Jayavarm in the 7th. The following is a listing of the motifs illustrated in some of the more famous Angkorian narrative bar reliefs. Angkorian shrines frequently opened in only one direction, typically to the east. The other three sides featured fake or blind doors to maintain symmetry. Blind windows were often used along otherwise blank walls. Colonnettes were narrow decorative columns that served as supports for the beams and lintels above doorways or windows. Depending on the period, they were round, rectangular, or octagonal in shape. Colonnettes were often circled with molded rings and decorated with carved leaves. Angkorian engineers tended to use the corbel arch in order to construct rooms, passageways and openings in buildings. A corbel arch is constructed by adding layers of stones to the walls on either side of an opening, with each successive layer projecting further towards the center than the one supporting it from below, until the two sides meet in the middle. The corbel arch is structurally weaker than the true arch. The use of corbeling prevented the Angkorian engineers from constructing large openings or spaces in buildings roofed with stone, and made such buildings particularly prone to collapse once they were no longer maintained. These difficulties did not, of course, exist for buildings constructed with stone walls surmounted by a light wooden roof. The problem of preventing the collapse of corbelled structures at Angkor remains a serious one for modern conservation. A lintel is a horizontal beam connecting two vertical columns between which runs a door or passageway. Because the Angkorian Khmer lacked the ability to construct a true arch, they constructed their passageways using lintels or corbeling. A pediment is a roughly triangular structure above a lintel. A tympanum is the decorated surface of a pediment. The styles employed by Angkorian artists in the decoration of lintels evolved over time. As a result, the study of lintels has proven a useful guide to the Datangov temples. Some scholars have endeavored to develop a periodization of lintel styles. The most beautiful Angkorian lintels are thought to be those of the Prako style from the late 9th century. Common motifs in the decoration of lintels include the kala, the naga and the makara, as well as various forms of vegetation. Also frequently depicted are the Hindu gods associated with the four cardinal directions, with the identity of the god depicted on a given lintel or pediment depending on the direction faced by that element. Indra, the god of the sky, is associated with East, Yama, the god of judgment and hell, with South, Varuna, the god of the ocean, with West, and Kibera, god of wealth, with North. Angkorian stairs are notoriously steep. Frequently, the length of the riser exceeds that of the tread, producing an angle of ascent somewhere between 45 and 70 degrees. The reasons for this peculiarity appear to be both religious and monumental. From the religious perspective, a steep stairway can be interpreted as a stairway to heaven, the realm of the gods. From the monumental point of view, according to Angkor scholar Maurice Glaze, the advantage is clear the square of the base not having to spread in surface area, the entire building rises to its zenith with a particular thrust. Asparas, divine nymphs or celestial dancing girls, are characters from Indian mythology. Their origin is explained in the story of the churning of the ocean of milk or Samudra Manthan, found in the Vishnu Purana. Other stories in the Mahabharata detail the exploits of individual Asparas, who are often used by Thegons as agents to persuade or seduce mythological demons, heroes and ascetics. The widespread use of Asparas as a motif for decorating the walls and pillars of temples and other religious buildings, however, was a Khmer innovation. 
In modern descriptions of Angkorian temples, the term Apsara is sometimes used to refer not only to dancers but also to other minor female deities, though minor female deities who are depicted standing about rather than dancing are more commonly called Davidas. Asparas and Davidas are ubiquitous at Angkor, but are most common in the foundations of the 12th century. Depictions of true, dancing, Asparas are found, for example, in the Hall of Dancers at Pra Khan, in the pillars that line the passageways through the outer gallery of the Bayon, and in the famous Bas relief of Angkor what depicting the churning of the ocean of milk. The largest population of Davidas, around 2000, is at Angkor Wat, where they appear individually and in groups. Varapalas are human or demonic temple guardians, generally armed with lances and clubs. They are presented either as a stone statues or as relief carvings in the walls of temples and other buildings, generally close to entrances or passageways. Their function is to protect the temple. Varapalas may be seen, for example, at Prako, Loliai, Bontes Ray, Prakhan, and Bonte Kadai. The Gajasima is a mythical animal with the body of a lion and the head of an elephant. At Angkor, it is portrayed as a guardian of temples and as a mount for some warriors. The Gajasima may be found at Bantesre and at the temples belonging to the Rauos group. The Rijasi is another mythical animal, similar to the Gajasima, with the head of a lion, a short elephantine trunk, and the scaly body of a dragon. It occurs at Angkor Wat in the epic boss reliefs of the outer gallery. Garuda is a divine being that is part man and part bird. He is the lord of birds. The mythological enemy of Nagas, and the battle steed of Vishnu. Depictions of Garuda at Angkor number in the thousands, and though Indian in inspiration exhibit a style that is uniquely Khmer. They may be classified as follows. In the ancient religion of the Vedas, Indra the sky god reigned supreme. In the medieval Hinduism of Angkor, however, he had no religious status, and served only as a decorative motif in architecture. Indra is associated with the East. Since Angkorian temples typically open to the east, his image is sometimes encountered on lintels and pediments facing that direction. Typically, he is mounted on the three-headed elephant Aravada and holds she's trusty weapon, the thunderbolt or Vajra. The numerous adventures of Indra documented in Hindu epic Mahabharata are not depicted at Angkor. The Kala is a ferocious monster symbolic of time in its all-devouring aspect and associated with the destructive side of the god Shiva. In Khmer temple architecture, the kala serves as a common decorative element on lintels, tympana and walls, where it is depicted as a monstrous head with a large upper jaw lined by large carnivorous teeth, but with no lower jaw. Some kalas are shown disgorging vine-like plants, and some serve as the base for other figures. Scholars have speculated that the origin of the kala as a decorative element in Khmer temple architecture may be found in an earlier period when the skulls of human victims were incorporated into buildings as a kind of protective magic or apotropaism. Such skulls tended to lose their lower jaws when the ligaments holding them together dried out. Thus, the Kalas of Angkor may represent the Khmer civilization's adoption into its decorative iconography of elements derived from long-forgotten primitive antecedents. Scenes from the life of Krishna, a hero and avatar of the god Vishnu, are common in the relief carvings decorating Angkorian temples, and unknown in Angkorian sculpture in the round. The literary sources for these scenes are the Mahabharata, the Harivamsa, and the Bhagavata Purana. The following are some of the most important Angkorian depictions of the life of Krishna. The Linga is a phallic post or cylinder symbolic of the god Shiva and of creative power. As a religious symbol, the function of the Linga is primarily that of worship and ritual, and only secondarily that of decoration. In the Khmer Empire, certain Lingas were erected as symbols of the king himself, and were housed in royal temples in order to express the king's consubstantiality with Shiva. The lingas that survive from the Angkorian period are generally made of polished stone. The lingas of the Angkorian period are of several different types. Amakari is a mythical sea monster with the body of a serpent, the trunk of an elephant, and a head that can have features reminiscent of a lion, a crocodile, or a dragon. In Khmer temple architecture, the motif of the makara is generally part of a decorative carving on a lintel, tympanum, or wall. Often the makara is depicted with some other creature such as a lion or serpent, emerging from its gaping maw. The makara is a central motif in the design of the famously beautiful lintels of the Rauos group of temples, Prako, Baekong, and Loliai. At Bontesre, carvings of makaras disgorging other monsters may be observed on many of the corners of the buildings. 
Mythical serpents, or nuggas, represent an important motif in Khmer architecture as well as in freestanding sculpture. They are frequently depicted as having multiple heads, always uneven in number, arranged in a fan. Each head has a flared hood, in the manner of a cobra. Nagas are frequently depicted in Angkorian lintels. The composition of such lintels characteristically consists in a dominant image at the center of a rectangle, from which issue swirling elements that reach to the far ends of the rectangle. These swirling elements may take shape as either vine-like vegetation or as thebides of nagas. Some such nagas are depicted wearing crowns, and others are depicted serving as mounts for human riders. To the Angkorian Khmer, Nagas were symbols of water and figured in the myths of origin for the Khmer people, who were said to be descended from the union of an Indian Braham and a serpent princess from Cambodia. Nagas were also characters in other well-known legends and stories depicted in Khmer art, such as the churning of the ocean of milk, the legend of the leper king is depicted in the Bari leaves of the Bayan, and the story of Mukalinda, the serpent king who protected the Buddha from the elements. Naga bridges are causeways or true bridges lined by stone balustrades shaped as nagas. In some Angkorian naga bridges, as for example those located at the entrances to 12th century city of Angkor Thom, the naga-shaped balustrades are supported not by simple posts but by stone statues of gigantic warriors. These giants are the devas and asuras who used the naga king Vasuki in order to the churn the ocean of milk in quest of the Amrita or elixir of immortality. The story of the churning of the ocean of milk or Samudra Manthan has its source in Indian mythology. A quincunx is a spatial arrangement of five elements, with four elements placed as the corners of a square and the fifth placed in the center. The five peaks of Mount Meru were taken to exhibit this arrangement, and Khmer temples was arranged accordingly in order to convey a symbolic identification with the sacred mountain. The five brick towers of the 10th century temple known as East Mipon, for example, are arranged in the shape of a quincunx. The quincunx also appears elsewhere in designs of the Angkorian period, as in the riverbed carvings of Kbalspian. Most temples at Angkor are dedicated to Shiva. In general, the Angkorian Khmer represented and worshipped Shiva in the form of a lingam, though they also fashioned anthropomorphic statues of the god. Anthropomorphic representations are also found in Angkorian boss reliefs. A famous tympanum from Bontesre depicts Shiva sitting on Mount Kailasa with his consort, while the demon king Ravana shakes the mountain from below. At Angkor Wat and beyond, Shiva is depicted as a bearded ascetic. His attributes include the mystical eye in the middle of his forehead, the trident, and the rosary. His vahana or mount is the bull nandi. Angkorian representations of Vishnu include anthropomorphic representations of the god himself, as well as representations of his incarnations or avatars, especially Krishna and Rama. Depictions of Vishnu are prominent at Angkor Wat, the 12th century temple that was originally dedicated to Vishnu. Both reliefs depict Vishnu battling with against Asura opponents, or riding on the shoulders of his Vahana or mount, the gigantic bird Mangaruda. Vishnu's attributes include the discus, the conch shell, the baton, and the orb. The nuclear family, in rural Cambodia, typically lives in a rectangular house that may vary in size from 4 by 6 meters to 6 by 10 meters. It is constructed of a wooden frame with gabled thatch roof and walls of woven bamboo. Khmer houses typically are raised on stilts as much as 3 meters for protection from annual floods. Two ladders or wooden staircases provide access to the house. The steep thatch roof overhanging the house walls protects the interior from rain. Typically a house contains three rooms separated by partitions of woven bamboo. The front room serves as a living room used to receive visitors, the next room is the parents' bedroom, and the third is for unmarried daughters. Sons sleep anywhere they can find space. Family members and neighbors work together to build the house, and a house raising ceremony is held upon its completion. The houses of poorer persons may contain only a single large room. Food is prepared in a separate kitchen located near the house but usually behind it. Toilet facilities consist of simple pits in the ground, located away from the house, that are covered up when filled. Any livestock is kept below the house. Chinese and Vietnamese houses in Cambodian town and villages typically are built directly on the ground and have earthen, cement, or tile floors, depending upon the economic status of the owner. Urban housing and commercial buildings may be of brick, masonry, or wood. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.